My name is Kathleen Martin, and I'm here to speak at this conference. I live down in Florida, and uh, my background is in sociology, social work, and education. And for the past 30 years, I have been investigating UFOs and extraterrestrial contact. I'm the author of four published books and one that will be published next year. And I am the Mutual UFO Network's national and international director of Experiencer Research and also the niece of Betty and Barney Hill. I did first become interested in this subject because Betty and Barney were my aunt and uncle, as I said, and I was 13 years old. I was home from school on the afternoon of September 20th, 1961, when my mother received a phone call. It was my Aunt Betty, and I listened to my mother speaking with Betty on the phone, and Betty told her about her concern that she and my uncle had observed a flying saucer the previous evening, and that it had come so close to their vehicle that she was afraid she and Barney had been contaminated. But I've, I've always been a very curious person, and so it m immediately made me want to know more. And what kind of contamination could it be? And, and what did scientists, or a scientist who lived in my neighborhood, have to say about that? Because my mother got in touch with him, and uh, what he said was had nothing to do with radiation. What he suggested to Betty was that if she had a compass, she should take the compass out by the car and uh, see how the needle reacted. Of course we know it's going to react to a little bit fluctuate to the old metal on a vehicle. I've done this in tests, I'm an experimenter, and also up near the battery of the car. But what Betty did is she took her compass out to the car, she started on the side of the car, and then she went up to the trunk of the car, and this is when she noticed new shiny spots on the trunk that hadn't been there the previous day. She held the compass over these spots, and the needle whirled and whirled. Uh, and this was very interesting to her. She told Barney about it, and he said, uh, Oh, Betty, don't be ridiculous. It's just an old compass. And she said, But Barney, you have to try this. You have to see this for yourself. And he did try it, and the needle whirled for him as well. I always knew that the close encounter with the UFO was true. It was in the Air Force files. There were two radar reports on it from different locations, one in Vermont, one in New Hampshire. There was a lot of evidence indicating that this was true, including 12 to 14 witnesses who saw the same, a craft of the same description on the same night in the same time frame, in the same location. I think there is a great deal of resistance with regard to the idea that non-human entities are coming here from another planet in another star system. Uh, it seems too unreal given our current level of technology. We don't know how to accomplish this, so given uh, human psychology, uh, thinking that we uh, have reached the apex of scientific development, uh, our scientists will say, impossible. This couldn't possibly happen. There are a lot of people who just simply deny this without ever examining the evidence. And for me, even, uh, back in the late 1980s, I had read a lot of information, I'd seen information on television, that uh, did not mesh with my personal memory of what I heard from Betty and Barney and what I had read in the first book about their experience. So I decided to launch my own investigation. The idea that they were actually taken aboard a craft and given these separate physical examinations uh, was something that I was highly skeptical about 
given the fact that Betty had had a series of five dreams, that the information aboard of what happened aboard the craft uh, actually was uh, brought forth through hypnosis. I knew about the possibility of confabulation under hypnosis. I did an extensive study of the academic studies on hypnosis as well. So I approached this as a skeptic and I examined all of the evidence. Betty gave me the hypnosis tapes that she and my uncle had. They were hypnotized separately and the psychiatrist, Dr. Benjamin Simon, uh, who was renowned in his field as uh, a psychiatrist, uh, who used deep trance hypnosis highly successfully with veterans who were returning from the war front during World War II to resolve their shell shock, what we now call post-traumatic stress disorder. His work was highly effective, and this is why he saw my uncle. I wanted to compare their separate statements under hypnosis, and I wanted to compare them to a series of dreams, five dreams, that my aunt had had uh, within 10 days of the time they had this close encounter, which was all recalled through conscious recall. My uncle uh, even recalled observing entities that he described as being somehow not human on that craft as he stood in a field looking up at them through binoculars. So I had the files of what they actually saw, what they actually remembered, what they recalled separately under hypnosis. I had their hypnosis tapes that I transcribed for comparative analysis, and I had Betty's dreams. And I set out on a very long journey of analysis of all of this. In the end, I discovered that Betty and Barney made correlating statements that were not in Betty's dreams, and sometimes these correlating statements were actually contradictory to information that was in her dreams. They both remembered the same thing, and it wasn't in Betty's dreams. At the end of my very extensive uh, investigation and research on their case, I became more convinced uh, that this was a real event.